I've been using the tanning booth since I was 21. It was 2012. I took my daughter to the tanning salon. The next thing I know, I'm being arrested, and it was everywhere. And now to a shocking story. A New Jersey mother who's arrested for allegedly taking her young daughter into a tanning booth. Yes, yeah, she does go tanning with mommy, but not in the booth. After this happened, I started immediately being called Tan Mom. Patricia Krenzel, also known as the Tan Mom. Tan Mom. Tan Mom. Joining us now, the Tanning Mom, Patricia Krenzel. She was an easy target for everyone because she was obsessed with tanning. She looked like a wow. french fry potato. She, she looked a little crispy, let's be honest, you know? Then I started going on shows. You name the show, I was almost on it. Tan Mom is a facade. My daughter! Never can. That was made up in, with the paparazzi. I miss my home and my life just being a mom. I was a wreck. I mean, obviously, you saw me throughout the years on the screen. Oh, I was cocktailing. You're baking cookies. The next minute, you're like making a batch of margaritas. I mean, I don't know what to say. Now I'm doing much better. I announced I was running for Senate about two or three months ago. Hi, I'm Patricia. I'm a single working mom with five beautiful kids. We are holding a town hall with Patricia. She's going to be answering questions from constituents. You're either ill-informed, you're misinformed, or you just have no clue. If Trump can win, I can win. I prefer not to be even called Tan Mom anymore. I was branded that name. I didn't ask for that name. I was a mom. Oh, I just can't even breathe telling this story. Oh my gosh, hi, my sweet. Well, I'm doing great, except for the weather. <laughs> Number two, and spray tan, please. I've been using the tanning booth since I was 21. Have you had any health risks from tanning? No. No melanoma or cancer or anything. I lucked out. I just lucked out. That's all I could say because I literally was tanning like seven days a week at one point. One doctor did say if you tan too much, you could get cancer. But that was the extent of it. He didn't elaborate any further. I do go through which rituals if I go a couple of days without tanning. It's like being an addict, I guess. It, that's just who I am. I like to tan. We decided to move to Florida about five and a half years ago, just after the tan mom thing and the whole situation. Oh yeah, this is nice. This is my pool, and this is my whole backyard. Sometimes I'll just stand out here and relax. You know, it's my home, and I, it's very comfortable, it's, and there's privacy. Adam and Greg are coming over here today um, just to just do a little bit of politics. My name is Adam Barta, and I am a TV producer. You may know me from the hit TV show Hashtag The Dish, which was number one this past year on one of the streaming networks, starring Mama June and Tan Mom, of course. That's Adam Barta. He's a Small Potatoes TV producer hoping to strike it big. Matt, if this fails, we're going to be homeless. And uh, I am also now a campaign manager, speaking of Tan Mom, for her U.S. Senate run here out of Florida. Okay, so this is a, I'll start with the most important update, which is today's event that we're doing with Hamburger Mary's. We have to rack up these endorsements from like yeah. important people. Getting Small endorsements people. Of people. <laughs> yeah, the community. So. That would be nice. Yeah, this is what we've been setting up yeah. for the past two months. Mm -hmm. I'm Greg Maleuf. I'm also Patricia's campaign manager. Patricia wants to make her voice heard. What is your actual position on abortion? You believe in a national law to protect a woman's right to have an abortion? Yes. Okay. I'm running as a Republican. I am a compassionate conservative. I want to change Washington from the inside out. The best advice I can give is always use sunscreen. As your U.S. Senator, I will do everything in my power. Tax breaks for moms. Juxtaposition, really, that's your campaign. The crux of it is, is a juxtaposition of humor and this serious right. issue, you know? Right. Like tackling these stuff. Oh, look who's home. Yeah. Hi, Hi Smirad, how are you? Um, how was today? No more bills. My daughter, Anna, is 17. 
She's sweet as a dumpling. She'd be like, Mommy, why are there people everywhere around you always? Or, Mommy, why this? Mommy, why that? And it's very difficult to explain to a child, you know, the sickness that was going on. It was 2012, and I was accused of taking her to the tanning salon and putting her in the tanning booth. The booth is way over there, and it's open this much. When she was outside waiting for me to bring out lunch, my daughter got a sunburn. The next day, she goes to school. I don't know who exactly to this day calls the police, but the police show up at my house and arrested me for child endangerment. Nutley police arrested and charged Crenshaw with child endangerment for allegedly taking Anna with her to this tanning salon and into an actual tanning bed, causing a slight burn. The next day, the news knocked at the door, and I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll do the interview. And the clip of me with the pink shirt on, that's the clip everyone used to portray me. And it went global. Every TV channel, you name it, was in front of my home. The paparazzi was in my tree, lined up for rows, weeks on end, months on end. This didn't stop for close to a year. After this happened, I started immediately being called tan mom. Patricia exploded into the headlines. She was everywhere. You know, Saturday Night Live was parodying her. And now I have the look every woman dreams of, Wiley e. Coyote, right after something blows up in his face. She just became this viral phenomenon because I think when people saw her appearance and the way she was speaking, it was so jarring. There's somebody out there on my whole life that doesn't like me because they're jealous, they're fat, and they're ugly. They became fascinated. They, they, they didn't understand how someone could be so eccentric and tan and crazy. But then I get agents and reporters and people that wanted to interview me. So then I started going on shows. Think about yourself. Don't waste your time on Meg. Here are some pictures. This is Anna who got caught up in this whole hoopla. She's at the beach enjoying herself. Um, yeah, these are all my kids. I was probably nine and when I started tanning, just going to the beach and so forth. Quite frankly, I hope my kids do the opposite. <laughs> I grew up in Long Island. You know, my parents were very strict, very strict parents. You had to be perfect. So judgmental. It was a very stressful, strict household. So I rebelled into my teens and then into college and being wild. But I, you know, who wouldn't? <laughs> My father, he would lay out in the sun with baby oil. You remember the albums, albums back in the day? He'd open them up, put aluminum foil, and lay out in the sun like that. But after that, um, watching my father, you know, you watch an adult, you're going to end up like your parent. I was probably about 22. It's the first time I went into a tanning booth. It was quite the experience. I was like, wow, I liked it. You know, I'm look how much tanner I am. Um, I was tanning in the beginning three times a week. And then as I progressed in age, I was tanning a lot more. What was it that made you want to tan so much? Get out of the house. It was my free time. The nail salon was right next door. The pizzeria was right next door. Uh, my friends were right next door. Uh, just to, uh, a break. My that was my break. I got. I guess. I guess I got. A, you can call it addicted. I guess I didn't see it. I, I just didn't see how dark I actually was getting. After she was arrested, she was an easy target for everyone because she was obsessed with tanning. She looked. Like a brown. french fry potato. She looked brown. She looked a little crispy, let's be honest, you know? And I think it goes back to the treatment of women in general, yep. in, and especially in entertainment. They're, they're devalued. They're made fun of. They're mocked. What made her think that that was a good idea? Maybe she should have just bought yeah. a mirror. That's her. Oh, my gosh. Good oh my lord. Gosh. The mom looks like uh, alligator face or some wildebeest with that wow. orange. Why did nobody, when this happened, say to this woman, wow, you're really unhealthy. That right. looks really tan. It, you know, nobody did that. It was no. all, how do, we, how do we make a circus show out of her? At Tan Mom's Peak, 
The most difficult aspect is they were judging my parenting. I'd give my life for my children. And then to be ridiculed, you know, was really rough. I never liked being called tan mom. You know, I laughed at it. I had to laugh at it and find humor in it. But deep down inside my stomach, I was disgusted. I was a wreck. I mean, obviously you saw me throughout the years. I lost myself. I was a mom, you know, and I turned into this creation. Oh, I was cocktailing. Well, I had nothing else to do. I couldn't leave my house. And um, when I had to appear somewhere, I was already, you know, had been drinking. I was in a fog. It's not normal. You're baking cookies, the next minute you're like making a batch of margaritas. I mean, I don't know what to say. I was trapped in my own home for over a year until we went to court and I won. I was acquitted of all charges. It's over with. She's less tan and now clear of charges. The tan mom craze started cooling down after well, to be honest with you, it has never cooled down completely. It's just calmer, but people still stare at me. Adam Barta, I met through a friend. I was set up to meet him to record a song. It was quite the experience meeting me at that time because I was, I was out of my mind. This man, I trust with everything that goes on, and he's tremendous. You're, you're gonna, gonna, and you have a problem with that? The first time I met her, she showed up completely sloshed off her rocker, and she was trying to make out with me. And I called my manager that night and I said, if you ever make me work with this woman or see her again, I will never speak to you. And here we are 10 years later somehow, yeah. and she's one of my best friends. One of the fun things that we did was make fun of Tan Mom, and we made up songs. And it was, you know, Tan Mom. Bitches! It's Tad Mom, bitch! Tad Mom! That one went wild. Oh, and yes. then um, the best one was Free to Be Me. It's Patricia! B -b 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 bitches be free! She's free to be Patricia Marie. We've been doing so many songs. We've had, you know, the number one music video, I think, on Sirius in 2018, or the most watched at the time. And we've made no money. So that's also, I think, something that really I want to see change for Patricia is like she really has gotten been brought through the ringer and she's not had any real compensation for the work that she's done. Right now, today, we are actually here at Hamburger Mary's, where we are holding a town hall with Patricia. She's going to be answering questions from constituents. She's going to be talking about the issues, the hot button issues, quite frankly. When I announced running for Senate, there was a lot of confusion. There was, well, wait, isn't that Tan Mom? Do you remember this lady? The mother of five has her sights set on a new career, United States Senator. Hi, I'm Patricia. You might remember me being that tan mom from New Jersey, but that was a decade ago. It was an interesting time, but like the world we live in, I've changed greatly. So I initially came up with the idea of Patricia running for some kind of council. We were just gonna start right. much less lofty and do it like at the city level, local level of but Boca that Raton. Wasn't enough. We needed to make it a Senate run. We needed to make it a, a position of power that something could be done. Do you think that you are qualified to be in the Senate? I think I'm qualified because if Trump can win, I can win. We're working on a team right now as we speak. We're strategizing my platform. Patricia's platform includes LGBTQ rights. Patricia really is, is a supporter and a staunch supporter of the gay community. LGBTQ. DQ, excuse me. LGBTQ. I know, I always get it mixed up for some reason. Working moms would definitely be the cornerstone 
of her campaign right now. Tax breaks for these working moms. Some people might say I have no qualifications to do this. My resume is that I have five children dealing with all these issues. Figuring out some of these medical issues and medical billing is quite a bit of an issue. I was in a medically induced coma for two weeks. So I know what it's like to deal with doctors and nurses and how very overwhelming healthcare can be. Some people wonder if it's a publicity stunt. No, I'm here for the running. I'm here to help the people of this world. That's what I want, is people to be heard. Gosh. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the, the few of us that are here today are very intimate audience. We are here with a town hall featuring the one and only amazing Patricia Krenzel, who is running for the U.S. Senate here in the state of Florida. Well, my story is long, and I'll try to make it short and sweet. I am a single mom today, a widowed, and I have five children. Um, two live with me. Um, the other are grown up, but it's still the struggling of just groceries alone. The problem that we're having is that we're not working as one, as a unit. Um, what what um, color you are, or um, if you choose to be gay or not, and the medical issues today that we all deal with that come in our mailboxes. We're talking with the working class moms that maybe might work at Walmart for minimum wage, and then sometimes even have to resort to prostitution. Um, I was in a coma three times. I'm not completely qualified. I'm educated, I'm, but I'm learning. I'm learning as I go along as well. I'm here for people, for the people, for people to be heard for all, from all around. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And speaking, I mean, speaking, speaking of those people, I mean, let's address some of the people that are, came out tonight to ask a couple questions for you. I think we have a question in the back here. Uh, my name is Tony. <coughs> I said, with you being a single mom, what plans do you plan on implementing for single parents struggling in Florida? I'm looking for single moms to get a tax break. I think the only way that we can start doing that to begin with is to start taxing the rich. Agreed? I was raised as a Republican and I'm very liberal in so many senses. Patricia is not afraid to put what she thinks is gonna win right. in front of the Republican Party. Patricia speaks not. honestly from her heart, so that's the reason why her platform's all over the place. What's your question for Patricia? I know you mentioned about the celebrity status. Do you see that being a, a build or a downfall for you? People know me as Sam Mom, is that helping me out? I was branded that name, I didn't ask for that name, I was a mom. Does that answer your question? Yes. I mean, I would really probably consider more on the independent side of things. She's against the wall, but she's for Donald Trump. They're almost contradictory in certain ways, but that's how she feels. And the Republican Party should become more like Patricia, and they would probably win a lot more. And it will happen. Patricia, do you really feel that women today are getting a real good shot at living their own lives? I think we've grown as women in society immensely. We have to keep fighting. What do you think is a good threshold for, you know, a mom making under, what, $150,000 a year? $200,000, $150,000? I think about 150000 Okay. Looks like we got another question in the back over there. I'm trying to figure out how you came up with that figure of $150,000. I'm not sure how long you've been in politics. I don't know how well you've done your, your homework because you are ill-informed. You're, you're either ill-informed, you're misinformed, or you just have no clue because I just don't know where you came up with that figure. We have to wrap up in a minute here. I just want to wrap it up and say thank you as well. Your points were excellent, and I just want to thank you for letting me share that with you.
Thank you, Patricia, and thank everyone here at Hamburger Mary's. Um, and if you'd like to meet Patricia, we'll be around hanging out, so come by, say hi. Personally, I think tonight went well. I think it was an opportunity for Patricia to connect with the community. She's got a couple more votes for it. I'd say she probably gained about four votes today. Where I think Patricia definitely shown in this town hall is the ability to work through her anxiety. I was sitting right next to her and she was shaking. She did not miss a beat. She gave coherent, thought out answers. She gave numbers, she gave facts, she gave reasons, and she was really able to relate her personal experiences. So I think the fact that she just made it through the whole thing without shutting down is a huge win and, and, and she held her own. I think I could have done better. They want facts, more facts and statistics. I don't have that, we don't have that all yet. You know, I answered the best I could. What chance do you think Patricia has at winning this senatorial war? I think Patricia has, honestly, a pretty good chance. And even if she doesn't win, win, lose, or draw, if she can do volunteer work and raise awareness and reach out to people, that's what she wanted to do. And that's where she's at in her life. And it's kind of a way, not a penance for Tan Mom, but it's sort of, it is a penance, yeah. I think, for, for herself to really realize she's a, a worthwhile human being and she wants to make change, like you said. Tan Mom is a facade that was made up with the paparazzi. I'm Patricia Murray, who likes to tan. Know the real me, that I'm not that crazy drinking person. I was thrown on a stage, and they took advantage of me, big time. I'll be tan forever, and I'll be a mom forever, so they can take their tan mom and shove it. <laughs>